I have two kids, 10 and 14. They don't mind my being a cop, but one of my buddy's kids do. Most of their friends won't come over to the house because their dad's a cop. They get picked on, other kids stay away. And it was his choice to be a cop, not theirs. But he can't imagine doing anything else. He loves the job, and it's not because of the pay. It's hard and tough. It takes a toll. It's demanding, but it's never the same. And you get to make a difference. I get to go to work every day and make a difference in somebody's life. I get to put away the bad guys, and I get to help keep the rest of us safe. I get to be with people when they're out of their minds from drinking or drugs or because their wife just told them that they wanted a divorce. I get to try and keep them from hurting themselves or their wife, their kids, or anybody. And there's so many freaking good kids out there. So good they almost make me cry sometimes. How much they care, how much they have to put up with, how hard they work, and how hard life comes at them sometimes. My daughter's two right now. She doesn't know that I'm a police officer. My son, who's four, does, but my husband and I make sure that they don't know that it's a dangerous job. They're too young for that. My daughter asked me if I'll be home to put her in bed, and my son asked me if I'm coming home tonight, Mom. I know that a lot of the kids at Portland High were on the SRO, and a lot of them are on their own in a way that I wasn't growing up. So I make sure that I ask them, what do you like to do? Who are your friends? Do your parents know where you are? Do they care that you're out at midnight? I care. I care that these kids are safe, that they're not going to get hurt, that they're not going to end up in jail. I care that they graduate and that they figure out what they want to do with their lives and that they go for it. I was born and grew up in Wyndham. I went to school like all the other kids. Didn't have a lot to do with police growing up, but I remember in Scouts, we had some game wardens come in and talk. And my family's been volunteer firemen in the town for over 60 years. I'm a supervisor, a sergeant, so I'm responsible for my team's safety when we're on our shift. I like being a leader. I've had my share of tough situations. One guy threatened to slit everybody from belly button to throat. I drew my gun and almost had to shoot him, but that's always a last resort. First, you try to keep everyone safe including the person who's doing the hurting. This is all pretty close to home for a lot of young people. They have to deal with tough times every day. I've gone to schools to answer questions. They ask me why I didn't shoot the bad guy in the leg instead of the head or the heart. And I explain, depending on how old they are, this is why an officer shoots center mass, and so on. How we have to stop somebody before they hurt somebody else. How we can't afford to try to aim for a leg and miss, because then it could be too late. I also let them know that when we get a call, we have no idea, no idea, what we'll be facing. More than half the time, we get completely wrong information about what's going on. We have to be prepared for anything. That's our job, to deal with it all. But pretty much every time, we're walking in blind. Something none of us ever forget is that every call we go on, there's always a gun present, our gun. And that changes the math. We can't afford to lose a fight. If we lose a fight, we've turned the gun over to the bad guy. We still need justification to use physical force in any situation. We just can't go around kicking in doors, but we can't afford to lose, ever. The hardest thing ever happened to me, other than my fellow officers dying, is that I was accused of something several years ago. I ended up, and found, I ended up in court and was found guilty of something I didn't do. After that, something went out inside of me. I didn't want to do anything. I was so mad, so furious, I just did my job. Shut up and did my job. It was like something inside me died. I didn't talk to anyone about it. I just did my job. That lasted for about three years. I just didn't care. Inside, I was furious and felt betrayed, but on top of that, I just felt numb. You give all you have in a job like this. You have to think fast. You have to act fast. People's lives are at stake. And to think I got blamed for something I didn't do. That cut me deep. I guess time made a difference. They say time heals all wounds, but I don't know about that. There's no other job like it. There's no off duty. At church, we notice the exits in case something goes wrong. Shopping with our family at the mall, we see people we've arrested. At home, our neighbors see us as cops first, neighbors second. And on our good days, our bad days, our doing okay days, we go out and try our best to serve and protect. We get it wrong sometimes, but we get to try. 
It's true, none of us wanted to do this, speak in front of a ton of people. We'd rather go out and fight bad guys, but we wanted to give you an opportunity to see inside us and see inside a police officer. To see who we are and that no matter where you come from, change is always possible. We are not the same, and you can be whoever you want to be. It gets better. We're all part of the same community, we just do different things. We have good days and bad days, and you deserve to be treated with respect. We may never be best of friends, but we have a relationship and it's going to last for the rest of our lives. It's what you and I do with it that makes the difference. And if you call, we'll come, no matter what. That's what we do.